fine degree of an array, where degree is the maximum frequency of any element in the array. Let's find out how to answer this question in a technical interview. To begin with, make sure you understand the question correctly. Write a sample array on the whiteboard and start calculating the degree and ask the interviewer if you calculated the degree correctly. As you can see in our sample array, the number one is appearing three times. So that's the highest frequency for any given element. So the degree of this array is three. And usually there is another part to this question as well. You have to return not only the degree, but also the minimum sub array with the same degree. So in our case, the minimum sub array with the same degree will be from the first one to the last one. So at this point, you need to think through what if multiple elements are with the same maximum frequency. To answer this question, we can use a hash table data structure. In this hash table data structure, we will maintain the count of each element, the left index and the right index seen. So for example, we see the first element that is one. One does not exist in the hash table. So we add a new entry into the hash table. This is how the entry will look like. We have the count of one, the left index is zero and the right index is also zero for key one. Next, we move to two. Since two does not exist in our hash map, we again add the entry for key two in the same way. As you can see, the count is again one and the left index and right index both point to one for the key two. Similarly, we do the same thing for key three, four and five. Next comes this one and the key one already exists in the hash map. So what do we do? We increment the count by one and we update the right index to whatever is the index of this new one. This is how the updated entry for key one will look like. We keep doing the same thing until the end of the array. So what do we have? Our hash map will look something like this. So once our hash map is ready, what we have to do is we have to loop through all the values in the hash map and find the value with maximum count. As you can see in our sample array, the maximum count is three. Next, we can look at the left index and the right index associated, which is zero and eight in our case. So the minimum sub array with the same degree will be from index zero to index eight. Now imagine if we had multiple elements with the same count. So for example, in our case, if there were multiple keys with same count of three, then what would we have done? So in case of values with same maximum count, we would have compared right index minus left index. What we want to do is we want to take the value with the minimum of right index minus left index. Next, let's take a look at the pseudocode for this solution. To begin with, since my hash table value contains three things, I would like to create a small class where I can define the integer count, the int left index and the int right index. I'm going to name it as element info. This will act as the value for my hash map. As you can see, here is the pseudocode for building the hash map. So we are initially declaring our hash map to have integer as the key and element info as the value and we're going to name it as elements. Next, we loop through the array from zero to the end of the array. For each and every element, we check if it is already in the hash map. If it is not in the hash map, we simply add the element to the hash map along with the new element info with count of one left index equal to i 
and write index equal to i. If the element does exist in the hash map, we update the associated value. We increment the count and we set the write index to i. Once we have the hash map ready and filled up, let's look at the next step. Next, as you can see here, we loop through the hash map and we try to find the degree as well as the list of elements which have that highest count. So to begin with, we initialize degree to zero and we have an empty list called element info with highest count. Now we are looping through all the elements. If the count of that specific element is less than the degree, we continue with the loop. If the element's value count is equal to the degree, then we simply add it to our list of element info with highest count. Next, if the element value count is greater than degree at that time, we basically erase the list and make sure that we instantiate a new list with that specific element and we update the degree to the new element.value.count. So at the end of this code, we will have the degree of the array as well as the list of element infos which have that highest count. So next, what we need to do is we need to loop through this list of ELE info high count and to find a subarray with minimum length. To begin with, if suppose we had only one single element in the list, then that element itself is our answer. The count inside that value will be the degree and the left index and right index will give you the minimum subarray. If there are more than one elements in our list, then we start off with our first element in the list and we keep track of that element using this uh, variable called result. And we assume that that is our minimum subarray uh, length by calculating the right index minus left index plus one for that first element. Next, we start our for loop from one to the end of this list. And for each and every element, we are calculating the subarray length by the same way. We subtract the right index minus left index plus one. <clears throat> if the subarray length is less than the minimum subarray length that we had initially, then we replace the minimum subarray length to the new subarray length. And the result is also changed to ELE info high count i which is the current element in the loop. So finally, we have the result. The result contains three things. The count, which represents the degree of the array, and the left index and right index, which represent the boundary of the minimum subarray. Next, the interviewer might ask you to write the actual code on the whiteboard. Before you start writing any code, please make sure to take care of all the edge cases. I'll be providing the GitHub link for the actual working solution in the video description. I'll be providing more such interview questions and their solutions on my YouTube channel. So please subscribe to Coach for Dev for more such questions. Until next time, happy coding.